Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial series. We're finally approaching a time when we can actually head out into the town. We've been avoiding that so far and I really wanted to head out right at the transition between daylight and nighttime. And again, uh, so it's about 2.15 in the game right now. Um, it usually shifts from daylight to nighttime. It depends on the season, I believe, and things. Um, but usually it's fully dark by like 9 p.m. or so. Um, and it's, you know, in that general area, 7 to 9-ish, that things start to, to shift. So I think we're going to, I really want to head out. You know, it's been, we're on episode 13. We're about six hours into the game at this point, And we have yet to really step foot into a dangerous situation. We haven't killed an enemy. We have, well, we killed a raccoon. But as any good serial killer will tell you, killing an animal is not the same thing as killing a human being. It doesn't scratch that itch. It doesn't feed that desire in your body. So, you know, this is something we're, we're going to address in the future. I do see we're in minimal pain. Why are we in pain? I don't remember us getting hurt at all. Hmm. We have seven intelligence, which uh, is reduced by our pain. What? A ah, that's right, the temperature. We did discuss fires in cataclysm right now are a little out of whack with their temperatures okay so before we head out what what else is important to talk about we haven't talked about clothing and uh clothing and armor are very important oh man there's a lot to talk about with those though and i'm not a hundred percent on some of the systems we really should talk about because once we head out so we talked about storage once we head out and get into a combat encounter there are a couple things we need to manage one is our um, encumbrance, which affects our melee abilities, and then the other is mainly storage, and then we have protection as well, because we want to be as insulated from damage as possible. Ooh, so where to start? Okay, so let's start with just a looking at a clothing item in general. We did this for, um, I believe, tools as well as weapons, so let's just pick, we'll go with the jeans, and we'll look at this entry and we'll talk about it. Of course, we have the description line up top, it is in the clothing category, so when we look in our inventory, um, it will appear in the clothing category, uh, which is its own thing. We don't have that currently because it's being worn on our, our body, so we don't have to worry about that. We have a price, uh, the volume of this. This is the size of this object. It takes up two liters of volume when it's in our inventory. When we're wearing it, this, this is ne it doesn't matter. Weight is 1.323 pounds. Uh, again, in our inventory, this will weigh 1.323 pounds. And un unlike volume, when this is on our person, this still contributes to our total weight being carried. Next, we have the material. For clothing and armor, material is a very, very important thing um, because it directly influences the protection that this object gives you. And we'll talk about that when we get to protection. Next, we have the owner, which is us, of course. If uh, it's an NPC trying to take it, we'll be stealing. So we, you know, don't take things that you don't own. If we find it in the world, it'll say no owner or our followers, depending on whether or not we pick it up. Next, importantly, it tells you what it covers. Now there are multiple body parts in the game, which we talked about previously. We have a head, torso, arms, legs, and we also have feet and hands, which are not on this body part list, but they show up for clothing purposes in the clothing list. Next we have what layer it goes on. There are a few layers. I believe there are three primary layers, layers that you're gonna see. Most frequently it's going to be normal. It's going to be close to the skin. Uh, so, so close to the skin refers to like undergarments and tight fitting vests, so, or tight fitting garments like a uh, Kevlar vest. A vest is a close to the body object. It's meant to be worn under clothing. Next, we have the normal layer, which is what the jeans occupy. This just means that they don't, they're not designed to go under or over other things. So like you wear jeans as jeans, right? Um, and then there's an outer layer, which is like for jackets and coats. If we look at our uh, boxers, you'll see those are the close to the skin layer. If we look at our winter coat, you'll see it's the outer layer. This means you can comfortably wear things underneath of it. And then I believe there is a strapped layer. Do wristwatches count as strapped? Yeah. And strapped is its own thing. So we can look at uh, what's the best way to ex explain this. So you these layers 
when well we're not going to get into this right now this is we're, we're looking at the item overview what am i doing let's just talk about the item so this just t tells you what the layer it's on coverage determines how much of this particular body part it covers so for instance our legs are 95 percent covered by our genes most of our legs are protected by these genes. If we look at something like socks, well, they cover 100% of your feet. Let's look at boxer shorts. You'll see they only cover 25%. This is because they're a much smaller garment. Shorts obviously do not cover as much of your legs as uh, regular pants would. Next, we have warmth. This denotes how much um, this contributes to warming your body. Higher warmth means you get hotter faster and it will insulate you better from the cold. Um, Cataclysm does not have an insulation system. Um, typically, in so like if you think of a game like Ark, uh, wearing clothing will benefit you both in cold and hot weather because it affects you. It's a scale. It's not warmth in Cataclysm is just from zero, I believe, and higher. There's no. It doesn't. Oh, how to say this? The genes make us warmer and protect us from cold by making us warmer. But they don't insulate us in any way from heat. They just continually contribute to us being hot. I don't know how to explain it. Let's skip that because I don't know how to put that into words. Next, we have encumbrance. This determines how encumbering the garment is. Storage. This determines how much it contributes to the storage that you can carry. Next, we have the protection values. You'll see there are five entries here. They're broken down into bash and cut, which are the two primary physical things that we will be most concerned about. There's also acid protection, fire protection, and environmental protection. Environmental refers to things, I th maybe radiation. I'm not sure if radiation is lumped into this or not, but it certainly protects you against gases and poisons, things like that. Yeah. Next, we have the entry uh, telling us what it is repaired with. So we need a needle of some sort or a sewing or tailor's kit in order to repair this piece of clothing. This is the section where it references what flags are on this item. So this item has the non-conductive flag, which means it does not conduct electricity. Makes sense. It's made of cotton. And this item can be reinforced, which just means it can be, um, once it's fully repaired, you can repair it even further by, by making it have an, an extra little bit of health so that it's a little bit more insulated from damage. Down here, we have additional um, qualities of this particular clothing item and these will be clothing specific so it says it has pockets to warm like these are apply to many many items whereas these are clothing specific tags so this clothing has pockets to warm your hands when you're not wielding anything so if we don't have anything in our hands we will get additional warmth on our hands uh, body part in our in our at menu it will display that we're warmer than if we actually are holding something in our hands some clothing have hoods that can be worn, uh, things like that. So it's important to read these. And it says this clothing fits you perfectly, which means it fits us. It's not um, a poor fit. And that changes your encumbrance. You'll see encumbrance is modified by the fact that this garment fits. Then finally, it has the same thing that most items have, which it displays what items you could craft using the jeans. Now, this is not something that I refer to very often. Mostly, though, that's because I've memorized a lot of the important things. So you can always look down here at a glance and see what you could possibly craft with these items. So clothing has a lot going on for it. The main, I mean, there's so much to talk about. Um, when So first of all, let's look at protection values because that's one of the most important things in the early game. Used to be if it was day zero. Uh, remember we talked when we created our world that we start on day 61. If this were day zero, like the game used to play, warmth would be very, very important because it's much, much colder during that time of the spring uh, season. So that's like something that older players will look to a lot. But currently, with things the way they are, you're not really cold in the early game like you used to be. And so protection becomes one of the most important. Like I often try to balance these these material, this uh, this information right here. What's the encumbrance? How much storage does it give me? And what's its protection? Those are the three things that I probably look at the most when I'm selecting clothing in the early game. So everything has a protection value. The main important ones in the early game of Cataclysm are bash and cut. Acid is one that is extremely situational. 
And most of the time, clothing with high acid resistance is very encumbering. And so the encumbrance is usually not worth it. So there are acid creatures in the game that can cause you a whole lot of trouble if you're not prepared for them. But having acid protection and high encumbrance, having high encumbrance every single time you go out is way more hindering than having high acid uh, on those rare occasions when you need it is beneficial. So it doesn't really, hopefully that makes sense. The encumbrance does not balance out the benefit that you get. It's much more bad to wear high acid gear in my opinion. So like if we find rubber boots, for instance, they have good acid protection and they insulate you from acid pools on the ground. And that sounds great because the acid zombies can be extremely, extremely devastating to uh, a weak or not prepared character. But the huge encumbrance that the rubber boots give makes it so that it's almost never worth it to wear them all the time. You could swap into them when you encounter an acid zombie, but for the most part, that takes time and you're not going to do that. So the encumbrance is usually not worth the, the added protection. So I usually just completely ignore acid protection. Similarly, fire protection exists in the game. People have told me you can wear fire gear and be pretty insulated from standing in a fire, which I don't know if that's true. That's just something that I hear from time to time. But it's so, so rare that you actually are damaged by fire damage that it's almost never worth it to, to value fire. It's so much better to value bash and cut. Similarly, environmental is something that does not come up very often. And most of the time, the gear that you need environmental on is just like a face mask or something that you wear to prevent inhaling poison gas. So on a pair of pants, for instance, having environmental protection is like totally meaningless. It just means nothing to me. And I'm sure that people will argue with me and say, oh no, these three values are very important. I always try to balance. That's great. I don't at all, <laughs> especially in the early game. In the early game, there are very few creatures that have acid uh, or environmental damage that they, that they deal to you. 90% of the monsters you're encountering in the first month of the game are going to be dealing bash and cut damage. So those are the values that are the most important. And they're the values that appear on almost every piece of clothing. In fact, every single piece of clothing has some amount of bash and cut protection. The others are much more situational and much rarer to find on clothing. Now, these values are based on the material that this item is made out of. So cotton... So there are two factors in determining an item's um, bash and cut protection, for instance. This is the material that it's made of multiplied by the thickness of the material. So jeans are pretty standard. I'm guessing they have a material thickness of one, and I'm guessing that cotton has a uh, value of three. And so it multiplies that three by the one of um, the thickness of the material, and it poops out, hey, it has a value of three and three. Makes perfect sense. Um, I'm assuming that cotton is three. Um, so you can base different clothing just at a glance and know if they're more beneficial or not. So if I pick up another pair of pants and it's say cargo pants, and they're also made of cotton, and they also have you know a roughly the same thickness that a pair of jeans would have, they're gonna have the same values. So you can know at a glance that, hey, those clothes are probably exactly the same protection values as the ones I'm wearing currently. The ones you want to keep an eye out for in the early game are leather items. Leather has, I think, double the protection that cotton has um, and tends to be, uh, sometimes they're thicker, so they have even higher protection values. So in the early game, keep an eye out for leather clothing. Some things that look like they're leather may not actually be leather. There's a proper leather trench coat, which is a very, very good item to get on day one and then there's a cotton trench coat which is more or less useless in my opinion um, I would you know take leather over cotton 90% of the time so if you're looting houses and you don't really have gear and you come across a pair of leather pants or a leather jacket odds are good that you're gonna want to pick that up uh, in the early game and throw those on because they're gonna be better like even the winter coat is cotton so cotton probably has a value of two maybe i did that math wrong but here even though it's cotton it's thicker because it's a winter coat it's padded 
Um, and so you'll see the value is higher. But if we pick up a leather jacket, a leather jacket is going to have values of like six or nine here. And so that would be much more beneficial than wearing this, this winter jacket. Now, again, you're balancing that with all kinds of other things. So if you pick up the cotton trench coat, maybe you don't care about the protection values, but you care that it's pretty warm and you care that it has a lot of storage. So it's always a balancing act between those things. In the early game, 99% of the time you're going to start with just regular clothing, and so your protection is extremely low, which means even a basic zombie is going to be able to penetrate your armor and deal damage. So as we move forward with this character, we're going to keep an eye out for clothing that's more durable. Leather items, um, wool items also have higher protection values, but wool items tend to be very, very hot to wear, so I don't often pick up wool items unless I'm really in a pinch. And then again, remember that thick clothing is more beneficial than thin clothing. So if I, um, let's say I don't have a coat and I'm just going around, I'm wearing a t-shirt and like a light jacket and I come across a hoodie. Well, a hoodie, even though it's cotton, is thicker than some of the light jackets and has better protection. They have a big kangaroo pocket. I know that I can get a lot of storage out of it. There are other factors that all contribute and you have to pick the one that's best for you. And in the early game, you don't have a lot of choice. It's usually whatever you can find. I will point out that there's a lot of clothing that you can craft in the game. But uh, for the most part, I just loot my clothing unless I'm looking for a specific item. So sometimes in the early game, depending on where you are and what start you have, your head can be getting very cold. A lot of classes don't start with a hat. You'll see we did not start with a hat. So if I wanted to start you know, with something just to get a little bit of warmth on my head, I will often make a turban which only has, I believe, yeah, 10 warmth, but it's basically just made of rags. It doesn't require sewing or anything like that. And you'll start to learn those things. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Let's go back to clothing. So we talked about protection. There's also, again, other factors. We've talked about the storage previously. The other factor that often gets discussed is warmth um, because, and, and remember, coverage also can be important you know, obviously you don't want to wear something that has 40% coverage if you have something that, that has 95% coverage. Because basically the way that works is that this has a 95% chance of covering. When you get hit on this body part, on the legs, this has a 95% chance of catching some of that damage. Whereas something with 40% is only going to catch 40% um, of that uh, of the time. So let's talk about warmth. Uh, we've seen this in our at menu. Um, warmth stacks up from body parts. There is an ambient temperature in Cataclysm depending on where we are. Like currently our torso is at 45. If we walk outside and check that, we're actually at 50. Really? It's hotter outside? Okay. Uh, that's a little unusual. Usually you get outside and there's a breeze or whatever. But again, there's lots of weather being simulated in Cataclysm. So I guess it depends on probably the sun's position. Uh, there's wind that's simulated in the game. There's a lot of things that affect your, your temperature. But anyway, uh, when we look at this uh, temperature in the menu, uh, we've talked about, you know, you kind of want things in the green. You want it near to zero as much as possible. Um, 50 is pretty bad. Uh, I try to keep it way lower than that. Like I would prefer to not be more than like 30-ish uh, would be my, my preference. And so how do you do that? You know, how do you manipulate that? You either wear more or take off more clothing. And if we go to the takeoff menu, it's an easy way to look and see what the warmth is. And you'll see we're wearing a winter coat on our torso, which is contributing 70 warmth. So if we go ahead and take off our jacket and we look at the menu now, you'll see that's dropped all the way down to seven. It's a much more manageable temperature. And so we don't really need this winter jacket, but again, because we're in the early game and we don't have a lot of protection, this extra layer, which is a heavy, thick clothing item, will give us some added protection on our torso as well as on our arms. So I think we are going to wear that for the time being, and it will get colder at nighttime. Oh, getting a little uh, uncertain of whether I'm doing a good job explaining this. The other way you can look at uh, temperature is using the sort armor function this is the plus key uh, which is located on the same key as your equals on the standard us keyboard it's right next to backspace most of the time 
Uh, and in this menu, we can uh, scroll up or down. It will display all items that we're currently wearing in the order that they are layered. And so obviously our socks and underwear are underneath of our clothing. Um, and then we go all the way to the outside layer, which is where we have our coat, uh, our sling, our wristwatch, things like that. We can also tab left and right on the arrow keys uh, or four and six on the numpad to select a specific body part so that we can see all items currently affecting a specific body part. So if we're saying, okay, well, our torso is really hot, we can tab over to torso and see, okay, we're wearing a long sleeve shirt, a winter coat, and our makeshift, makes, makeshift sling is also affecting our torso. So we can quickly look at each item as we want to, and it will tell us all the information. So the long sleeve shirt is contributing five. We know that's probably not our warmth issue. Okay, this is contributing 70. This is almost certainly the issue we're having. Uh, and then we can look at uh, the sling as well. And we can also see protection values here as well as the position they belong in and other relevant information. Um, and then down here we see the same menu that we see in the app menu. So this is, um, this is a handy menu to learn. Uh, I can let you quickly glance at things. Warmth is something you're just going to have to learn to deal with. Again, it's a little out of whack at the moment, so it can be a little overwhelming. If you're standing next to a fire while indoors, obviously most of our problems arise from us having so much warmth to begin with and then walking over to a fire on top of that. But um, yeah, things have been a little out of whack with temperature lately, so it's something to keep an eye on. And then finally, um, we need to talk about encumbrance. So encumbrance, it does different things. If we go to the app menu and we tab to go to encumbrance and warmth and we hover over a specific body part, it will tell us precisely what our current encumbrance is doing to us. You'll see we have 26 encumbrance total uh, on our torso. And on our torso, this means that we get a negative 26% to our melee attack rolls. It reduces our ability to dodge, increase the amount of movement it will cost us to make a move while swimming. So again, remember this is based on an average of around 100 uh, is, is in the optimal single move takes about 100 turns. So to add 200 to our ability to swim means we're swimming like three times more slowly than we would be walking. Um, or And rather it would take three more turns than it would typically, three times as many turns to move one tile in water than it would on ground. And then similarly, our melee and thrown attack movement penalty is plus 26, which means it costs 26 more moves per attack. So if we have like, a, what's our spike on a stick? It takes 109 moves, now it takes 135 or whatever. So it is significantly hampering our ability to use our melee weapons and whatnot. That's a big deal. Torso encumbrance is one of the most important encumbrances. At a glance in this menu, the first number is our current encumbrance, and then the second number, like see, 26 plus zero. 26 represents the current encumbrance that is on our torso, and then the plus zero represents if we're wearing any conflicting items that are penalizing us even further. So like currently, we're wearing a coat. If we go ahead and put on an emergency jacket as well, we now have two items that are occupying the same layer. These are both outer layer clothing. So if we look at this in the menu, you'll see they are now color coded as yellow. And it says wearing multiple items of outer clothing on your torso is adding encumbrance there. So not only are we getting the encumbrance here, which is 15, and the encumbrance here, which is 20. So we're getting 35 between these both. But in addition to that, we're being penalized even further for wearing two items on the same layer. And you'll see we now have a plus 10 in our second column. That is the additional penalty for wearing duplicate items. Used to be that this was almost always plus two, but for jackets, it appears to be a plus 10. So if we take off the emergency jacket, not only did our core encumbrance drop, but we no longer have that penalty. So it's very, very important that you don't wear too many conflicting items. Some things are fine to wear conflicting items. If you wanna throw on two backpacks um, from time to time, that is, is not a big deal. But as we encumber our torso further and further, we get worse and worse at combat. And so this is a game you have to play of trying to balance your encumbrance with your protection. Obviously, we could put on six layers of jackets and get a ton of protection, 
but the encumbrance would reduce it so much further. Uh, our encumbrance would reduce our functional combat abilities so far that we would be having a negative 60 to hit. Uh, it would take us 60 to 70 more moves per attack. It really quickly ramps up and cuts down your ability to function in melee combat. So encumbrance is, is very, very important to keep an eye on. And the other thing to note about encumbrance is that storage items in the game now function so that they have two separate encumbrance values. They have encumbrance at all times. So wearing this makeshift sling gives us seven encumbrance on the body part that it's attached to, which is fine, is pretty low in fact. And it has encumbrance when full of 15. And what this means is that as we put more things in our pack, it will gradually increase the encumbrance of our storage items. Okay, so if we're wearing a backpack, the backpack is not very encumbering when it's empty, right? It's very easy to wear. We're not trying to balance a heavy load on our back. It's very easy to function with a backpack. As the backpack fills up, it becomes more difficult to maneuver, harder for us to balance that extra weight on our back. And so we add, get additional encumbrance. So even though our encumbrance is currently 28 on our torso, if we went out and looted right now, filled up our pack and was heading back to base, it would be more like 35 or 36 because we have that additional encumbrance to deal with. So encumbrance is, is really important. Oops, don't, uh, don't mind my Google. En encumbrance is very important. Specifically, your torso encumbrance is by far the most important um, because it directly affects your melee abilities. And in the early game, it's very important that you hit your targets because if you get into a prolonged... Um, melee in the early game you have pretty bad stamina you don't have a very good weapon it can take you quite a few turns to kill an enemy and then if you add to that that you're missing an extra 30 percent of the time you can end up in combat for a full minute and lose your stamina and quickly be overwhelmed get your limbs broken and that's really the end of your game so torso encumbrance is is the one i look at the most is by far the one i'm concerned with the most you can hover over each body part to see what they're currently affecting. Um, and here we can see head encumbrance has no effect. That's an important one to note. The only problem with head encumbrance is that it determines how many things you can wear on your head. So I believe 40 is the cap in general once you get past. So like I can wear a hat and I can wear a helmet together, but once the encumbrance reaches a certain point, I couldn't put on a second helmet, for instance. So that's the only thing head does. Mouth encumbrance is very important as well because it directly affects your ability to regain stamina. So if you have a heavily encumbered mouth and you're trying to run around, your stamina regen will be affected by that and that's very, very important. Stamina is a, is a resource that needs to be very closely monitored in Cataclysm. Other than that, uh, I don't often care about arm encumbrance even though it affects stamina. Um, you can look at these individually. Most of them are not significant. Feet and legs, it's important to note that even though these values are pretty low, running movement speed cost of plus two, for instance, with eight encumbrance is not a big deal. But combined with the feet and legs together, both contribute to that movement cost. And as you encumber yourself more and more, they become pretty significant and noticeable. So keep an eye on your, your movement speed. Really, you'll just have to look at them individually and decide what's a comfortable place for you. 28 torso encumbrance is a little higher than I would like it to be. I do try to keep my torso encumbrance down as much as possible, but I'm okay up to 35 or 40 uh, is really where I would draw the line, I would guess. Maybe not even that high. 40 is pretty high for me. So it's all about personal preference. Uh, it depends on your level in the game as well. If we're, you know, uh, six months into the game, we are pretty like powerful characters by that point and having negative melee attack rolls doesn't matter as much because we have high skills to help balance that out combined with the fact that we'll probably switch to firearms it becomes significantly less important but in the early game melee attacks are very very important because you will be meleeing a fair bit in the early game until you can get your hands on a ranged weapon I think that's more or less all we need to talk about with clothing. I might be missing something. I don't, didn't feel good about this episode. There was so much to talk about. I don't know if I covered it very well. 
but I think that worst case scenario, you got a basic overview of encumbrance and what I look for in clothing. And then of course, as we find items in the game, we'll make comparisons to one another and we'll talk about why one is better than the other for our current situation and in most situations and this and that. So once we start exploring and getting our hands on loot, we'll talk about things a little bit more in detail. I can't think of anything else clothing related. Um, so let's just look at our clothing. Are we, you know, in an acceptable place to head out of our base? The number one thing I would say before heading into town is to ensure that you have storage. So you'll see we do have an additional storage from our makeshift sling. This is not an optimal thing. And the reason I even brought up clothing is because we needed to talk about encumbrance because the sling is pretty encumbering on our torso. It's not super bad. It used to be way worse before the encumbrance changes um, to that to shift where they now only really encumber you when they're full. But this 15 is a kind of a lot to be, I mean, I guess it's really not, it's not optimal storage. We would prefer a backpack or, or something of that sort. And we would certainly transition to that when we find one. But I wanted to explain before going into the city that it's important to have storage, but that it negatively affects your combat abilities by encumbering you. Uh, and I think we've we've discussed that a little bit. Other than that, I think we're fine. You're not going to find much better than this in the evac shelter. You're really not going to find much better than this, probably even in most houses. Um, finding leather is not super difficult, but it's also not the easiest thing to find a specific body part. Like I don't see leather jackets as much as I see leather pants. And so we'll we'll get this sorted out as we progress through the game. But uh, this is probably what you'll be going into combat with. So we don't need the emergency jacket. And I'm hesitant to even wear the winter jacket because we're so warm. But as the sun goes down, it will get colder. So it'll be less of a big deal. And again, it has a higher protection value because it's thicker than the emergency jacket. So this has protection of 4 and 4 at a 95% coverage. Whereas the emergency jacket... Has a, has a two and two with a coverage of 90%. So not only does the winter coat cover more of our body, which means it will be more likely to absorb damage for us, but the damage it absorbs is double what the emergency jacket is. So, yeah. I don't know if this was a good one. Still, uh, still feeling very hesitant about these tutorial series. It's, it's so far out of my comfort zone. It's not something that I've really... And I don't put planning into things. I usually just sit down and say, okay, we're going to talk about this. I don't have a script or anything. This has all been off the top of my head, as it is in every single episode. And as a Let's Play, you can't really target individual things. Like if I were doing just tutorials, I would debug everything and set everything up to talk about a very specific thing and break them down into more manageable chunks. But because I want to play the game... While I'm talking about these things, it's a lot harder to... Because I don't want to debug stuff. It doesn't matter. You probably don't care. And every time I complain about it, I alienate one more person in my audience. So that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll be back with more of the Cataclysm tutorial series in the near future. And I'll see you next time.